Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. I thought I'd do a bit of an update video on my crafting life. What I've been up to the past week or so. Not a lot. Life itself is pretty busy. But I do have some finished objects to show you. And I have some acquisitions. I had to think then. Sax and my dog's here. He's not usually this close to my crafting stuff. But we thing away. He's suffering, suffering separation anxiety and he's quite clingy. And Reeves is not home to take him off my hands. Anyway, we will soldier on. Let's get started. As far as, um, we'll start with finished objects. So the first one I've done, I don't like. I've made it before. This is a second attempt. There won't be a third. It's a free pattern. I don't know if it's me or the pattern. The pattern is quite, um, they assume quite a lot. You need a bit of experience to really follow what they're doing. Anyway, Saturday the 8th was World Oceans Day, as, long as, as well as Knitting Public Day. It was also my crochet for cancer meeting, which I didn't go to. I wasn't feeling very well. Anyway, all week here we celebrate um, World Oceans Week because we have the Great Barrier Reef just off the coastline here down at the beach and it is suffering damage from climate change. So I thought for World Oceans Week I would make my Nemo Tea Cozy pattern again. And here it is. So the first time I made it, I made it in the three weight or eight ply yarn as suggested. It was quite flimsy and fragile. I did have trouble putting it together, but that was my fault because I was trying to put the wrong end on the wrong way. And it was quite a laugh. It had ended up in a charity donation bag. It did look okay, but wasn't great. This one, well, I don't like the way it looks. You put the tail on, like if you're right-handed, you put it on the left-hand side. I probably could have sewn his fins closer to the front. I was, by this stage, I was really frustrated with it. It just, I don't know, it doesn't seem to go together properly for me. But that's my Nemo Tea Cozy. This time I decided I would use a thicker yarn. So I used Chunky, Big Value Chunky by King Cole. I bought this in Wick north of Scotland last year. It's 100% premium acrylic, 167 yards, 152 metres per 100 gram ball. And that's what I have left in the ball. I haven't weighed it, so I can't tell you how much. The colour is mango. The black and the white are just Red Heart Super Saver doubled up. So I've made it in three weight and I've made it in chunky, which I'm not a real chunky type yarn person. I think the teapot lid is funny. Excuse me, hiccups. Funny there. But I don't know if I'd ever do a third and a four weight. Because even though I used a bigger, thicker yarn and a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, it didn't finish any bigger. The three weight fitted exactly the same teapot. So it's a little disappointing. This was, well, £2.99, which on today's exchange rate is about $6 a ball. It is beautiful yarn. I do like it. And if I see it again, because it's quite soft and it's not overly chunky, if I see it in the UK again, I would buy more of this. Because, I, like I said, I'm not a chunky yarn person, but I don't mind that one. So I'll put a link to the pattern in the description box below if you want to give it a go. Let's see if you can do a better job of it than I do. But my Nemo Tea Cozy celebrating World Oceans Day. So remember, recycle, repurpose, reuse, and let's stop climate change because it is damaging our environment. On to my next finished objects. Well, there's two. The Bod Hat of Palooza beanies weren't fit for me. They were chunky yarn. I don't have a lot of chunky yarn. And like I've said, I don't like using it. But I did make two beanies because I found these beanies I liked. They are tutorials by one yarn addict. So he designed a beanie for kindness. And he wanted us to pick a name for his beanie. 
and he picked two out of the names and then we got to vote on the best name that came out in the draw. So it was Try a Little Kindness. And this was his beanie. Ta-da! I made it. Look, it's not great on this head. It looks like it's slouchy, but it's not. It actually, because I've got a buff head, fits me really well. There were quite a varied stitches in there, but it, I really liked it and I enjoyed making it and I think it looks really great. So I made that in Spotlight Super Saver, which is like a 10 or 12 ply. Oops, sorry, not the camera. Put him over there. In silver, this one. This is a 200 gram ball, it's 400%, it's 100% acrylic, Four Seasons, Seasons Spotlight Super Saver. It's supposed to be like Red Heart, but I think it can be a little thicker sometimes than Red Heart Super Saver. So I made it in that one and I really liked it. The other, that was the winning name, Try a Little Kindness. The other name we voted on was Act of Random Kindness, which is the one I actually voted for because I really like that name. And he decided he would make another beanie for that name, changing up the stitches. So I did that tutorial too. So here it is. I really like this one. I just love the stitch work, the way it turned out. Yet again, it looks slouchy, but it's not. It fits me perfect. Same thing. I use Spotlight Super Saver in the colour Peacock. But believe it or not... This is a lot softer than this. Made by the same company in the same place. Just this is lovely and soft. This is not so soft, but it's okay. But, oh, I'm just amazed. So yes, that's how much I have left of this ball. It actually used less yarn. I still used a 4 millimeter, um, 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And I think it's probably because my tension on the day was different with this one and the fact that it was softer than this one. But I made two beanies and I really like them. So check out the tutorials by one, the Yarn Addict in the description box below. Especially if you're looking for beanies to make for charity and you want to vary it up a bit because they are great tutorials and he does explain them really well. I like the thought of doing something with kindness. So that is my total finished objects. My dog is <laughs> hes never this clingy to me. <laughs> I hardly ever see you, do I? Anyway, acquisitions. Crochet for Cancer last month when I went, there was a lady who had some patterns she put out for us to take. She'd been given a lot of patterns and she said that there's, there was a huge pile of them. It take what we wanted because the rest would just end up in the bin. Now a lot of them were beanie patterns and some of them were quite modern or and some were vintage. But I actually took a winter warmers vintage one of beanie scarves and mittens. It, this it's really quite interesting because look at the vintage balaclavas people used to wear. Whether I make some out of this, I don't know, but I did like this, so I took that one from the pile. It's a Peyton's Pattern Winter Warmers. Costs nothing, she said, just take them. The other thing was there were some magazines, and I took this Crochet Living magazine, which someone paid $19.99 for, which is quite expensive. I, it says the Makers of Women's Weekly, which is a magazine here. So $19.99 seems quite exy. But in this was a pattern both Uya and I wanted to make. And I said, well, we'll share it. But she may have to have it before me. Because here it is. I don't know if there's a better picture than that one. Here it is. It is Magical Unicorn. Look at that. We thought that was really cute and we both wanted to make that. So I took that pattern book. There's also some other things in here that I thought I might make. That's why I've got it. At the time there was starfish cushions and I was thinking of Great Oceans, World Oceans Day. Um, I'm trying to find
one. There's a baby blanket pattern in here I really thought would be great to make. Um, it is made with cotton in here. I haven't really looked at a yarn substitute for cotton. I have to see if I can find it. It's quite an um, interesting looking pattern. I should have posted marked it before I started doing the video, but I forgot to do that because I guess I'm getting old. It's sort of like doing triangles and then you put them together in a baby blanket. There's pet beds, there's lampshades, coat hangers, cushion covers, baskets. There's so much in this magazine. I guess $19.99, you do get a lot for your money. Coasters, placemats. <coughs> that is, won't be a moment. Sorry, I felt a coughing fit coming on. Can you see that? I thought that was really gorgeous. So I may make that one day. So Ulia and I are going to share that magazine. And then we got talking about booties and different types of booties. And she was telling me about this lady who'd been looking for a booty pattern. And she had these patterns and she had a couple of them. And she came into my office after we'd been to that meeting on Saturday. And gave me Peyton's booties galore pattern. Because she had a spare one. Look at all those. And on the back. All different booties you can make for children and toddlers. And yeah, I may end up making some of those. So that was a vintage pattern from Ulia on booties. So I really I really do like vintage patterns. Because sometimes you can find something you like it, but you can it inspires you to modernize it and make it more today. And um, it's a real great way to get inspiration from. So if you ever see any vintage patterns, make time to look at them and get your creative juices going. So my other acquisitions. Well, I get a $10 voucher from Spotlight for my birthday. And I have a kit at work of tulip hooks, not a full range, um, soft touch clovers. It's like a full kit with sewing needles, few buttons stitch markers I keep that at work um, with some scrap yarn because sometimes in my lunch hour I'll crochet a little scrap project or sometimes I have like I finish work at three but my meetings not till five and it's not worth me coming home so I'll have a project there that I can work on have a cup of coffee a cup of tea and work on it till my meeting time so I use my ten dollar voucher to get ten dollars off this Edimo tulip hook, a three millimeter. Um, I think they're like $20 here. So it was worth getting one of those and that'll go in my kit at work. At home, I have two complete sets of clover and more, and more hooks that I use all the time. But these are just like my emergency hooks at work that I keep a set of. And I usually keep the sizes I like. Also keep knitting needles four millimeter knitting needles are my go-to needles so sometimes i'll have those i'll use those and i have a so many chai goos i keep a set of chai goo four millimeters at work so that's what i use my birthday voucher on a friend gave me something a little different i haven't done embroidery since i was first married i used to do it all the time she gave me a embroidery hoop 23 0.5 centimeter nine inch embroidery hoop in orange plastic my favorite color I used to have one in wood that's what I used back then and she said I don't I said I don't know if I'll embroider but I have seen on someone's channel where they use like some calico and they hang it on their wall and they put all their badges on it and I have a few badges now and I thought well if I don't use it to embroider I will use it to put my badges on bit of a story I went off embroidery because I spent nearly a year it was like an embroidered border around a beautiful lace tablecloth and I spent a year sewing that for my mother-in-law for Christmas now my mum really loved it and I know she would have wanted it but when I gave it to my mother-in-law for Christmas her face said it all she didn't like it she threw it in a drawer and I never ever saw her use it and it sort of turned me off embroidery 
because I'm thinking, well, if she didn't like it, people don't like embroidery. And I haven't done any real big or even decent items. I might do eyes or face on an amigurumi, but not anything that requires a hoop. But that was a really nice gift from a friend who was trying to think of something different and encouraged me to do a different craft. The other thing I bought, because there was a 30 to 40% sale, was, ta-da, a wreath hoop. I thought I would use a wreath hoop either for Christmas in July ta -da, or Christmas at the end of the year. I, I do enjoy making that wreath hoop that I made and I thought maybe I'll do a Christmas one. These are quite exy, but they're definitely worth it when you can get 30 to 40% off. Which brings me to July. So over the years I've done different make-alongs giveaways where I've done my birthday giveaway and I've done Christmas in July giveaway, scrap timber, all those sort of things. But recently with comments and emails, I've been disillusioned by doing giveaways and giving away prizes to people because it seems some people are never happy and some people only enter and do the minimum requirements to win the prize. So for Christmas in July, which I did for my birthday, but I didn't tell anyone. I'm just going to pick some random people. So what it is, in Christmas in July, if during June, comment on any video. Doesn't matter, a nice positive comment would be appreciated. Any video. I'm going to pick one podcaster and one subscriber to receive a mystery gift from me. Now that could be a mystery box of goodies, a gift voucher from somewhere, even a patent prize, depending on how many comments I do. If there's quite a few, I might do two subscribers on one podcast, but it is open worldwide. Anyone in the world can comment on my videos, but I'm not going to draw it on camera and I'm not going to announce the winners. I'm just going to send prizes. I'll email the people who I pick and ask them for their postal address if I don't already have it. If you want to send me your postal address so it's a complete surprise, you can email me your postal address and go in my address book for future because this may be the way I go on giving away prizes because it's been quite disillusioning the last six months on the prizes I've given away. Um, it's never cheap. I sent something off to the Northern Hemisphere today and postage was close to $60. But that was my choice. And so when I do that, it's not that I don't expect um, thanks or gratefulness. I just expect that you appreciate someone has thought of you. It might not be yarn you use. It might not be stuff you use. But you can always pay it forward and give it away to someone, even to charity. Anyway, Christmas in July will be just people I pick at random from different comments on my videos as long as they're nice positive comments. I think it also filters out those people who um, wait to go in a drawer and are only there to see whether they win. I've actually stopped going in drawers because I know how it feels as a podcaster when people just randomly pop up with a comment because there's a prize giveaway. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be do, doing. Like I said at the beginning of the year, I'm going to march to the beat of my own drum. And this is a new drum for me with prizes and giveaways. So guys, that's all I have for you today. Life-wise, if you're interested, got off to, and I've got a sticker on me from the wheel, from the foam wheel. Um, thing flew out on a Sunday night about six o'clock and at three o'clock in the morning and you stop whimpering. My dog is suffering terrible separation anxiety and I think he just knocked the table a bit, sorry, which knocked the camera. Um, three o'clock in the morning, there were water pipe issues. We had a tap rapidly leaking in the bathroom. I went to the mains to turn off the water to the house and that was leaking and I couldn't turn it off. Reeves couldn't turn it off. No one could turn it off. 
So I had to call the water board because water is expensive. We were working out we were, the tap in the bathroom was probably expelling about two litres of water in less than an hour, which is a lot of water wastage and water isn't cheap. So yes, the water board were pretty quick. They, I rang them and the emergency line and they had someone here by 7.30 in the morning and he, he did say it could be turned off with a big, I don't know what, ratchet thing. But he said it would have been hard. He'd fixed all the leak. He did that. And to help me out, because he said, I did say to him, I do have arthritic risks. I am here a lot on my own. He put in a lever so that I can lever, just flick the lever over and it cuts the water to the house. It took me most of that day to get a plumber in to do the tap. Stop it. Um, he's just such a baby. Um, but, and the irony it is, the guy that eventually came only lives the street over and he came over and he went out, bought me this new tap because he said the tap can't be fixed even though it was only three years old. He also gave me water isolation point in the bathroom. I just need to press this button and it cuts off the water in the bathroom but not the rest of the house. And he was very reasonable in price. Because one of the plumbers wanted $265 just to come out and look and see what was wrong. And he didn't charge me much more than that to actually come out, look at it, go away, buy the stuff, come back and do the job. And apparently he's had a family business over there, his family, for about 50 years and I didn't know. I just happened to look online and he popped up. So I was really lucky that he did that. But yes, that was the first thing that went wrong. And then the next day... And that's why there haven't been videos or much of me interacting on YouTube channels. We lost internet for three days and no one could tell us why. And then all of a sudden it starts working and touch wood, it hasn't failed since. Which was really good on the weekend because it was the Canadian Grand Prix. And we wanted to watch the Grand Prix. So I watched that with Daniel Avocado. I didn't take any photos. But yeah... Oh, no reason why. The NBN people couldn't tell us why it wasn't working. The Telstra people couldn't tell us why it wasn't working. It was just dead. And then all of a sudden, it starts working again. Yes, Saxon the dog is very, very... This time seems to be missing thing more than ever. He's very um, suffering from anxiety, separation... He really spends time with me, but he won't leave my side. He will if Reeves comes over. I won't see him. He'll be with Reeves. He prefers men. But, yeah, poor dog. But hopefully he will get better. He's not normally in this room with me. But if I put him outside, he just cries at the door. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great week. I have worked on other projects, not very much. Um, because like I said, I have extra chores to do. But it is fun and I really enjoy doing the yarn, the war, yarn addicts beanies and I am enjoying his spring throw cow. I've started week five. I normally have it finished by now, but too many chores to do. Okay, take care, stay safe and make sure you have one crafty day. Bye for now.